Right. Well, I think the target they're talking about is basically Carg Island. There are a few other terminals and whatnot, but but none as big as the ones on Carg Island. I think what the White House is worried about most of all is if you uh, eliminate uh, effectively eliminate Iran's export capability, that the global price of oil will go up, and therefore gasoline at the pump in the U.S. will go up, which would be a very bad thing uh, for the Democrats in November. Uh, I think the Israelis are making sure they've got all options on the table. Let everybody worry about it until they make up their mind. They're not losing time at the moment because I think Israel is also quite concerned about the enormous arsenal of missiles that Hezbollah has, which I think uh, the Israelis are doing their best to uh, to reduce as quickly as they can. So I'm, I'm not sure that the strike is necessarily going to happen imminently. A lot of planning to do, and uh, I think... Uh, Israel is going to take take the to take it at the time they think is best for them. You know, the other question being asked in the region right now, particularly among the Gulf leaders, is why would the United States actually allow that to happen? This is a relationship between the U.S. and Israel that is absolutely critical for Israel's security. And while, of course, the Israelis will argue that they have a right to defend themselves and a right to go after Iran, the question being asked here is. Is the United States still a reliable partner to allies in the Arab world if it does indeed allow Israel to go ahead with a strike on nuclear facilities, with a strike on oil facilities, with a strike on military assets or something else? Well, I think the Arab governments in the Gulf region largely see the strategic threat from Iran the same way that Israel does. And the fickle partner in this relationship is the United States uh, under President Biden. From, from Israel's point of view, uh, they don't know when the next ballistic missile fired from Iran will have a nuclear weapon under its nose cone. Th this is the very definition of an existential threat. Israel is a small country, six, eight, ten nuclear weapons. There won't be in Israel anymore. So if I were in their shoes, uh, I would do that and I'd worry about repairing the relationship with the U.S. later. By definition, Joe Biden ceases to be the problem on January the 20th next year. Ambassador, what do you believe Israel's end goal in Lebanon is? Well, I think uh, it's it's something that they've uh, they've been thinking about for a long time, and it's they've done something similar in uh, the Gaza Strip. It's the elimination of the Hezbollah political and military uh, structures and capabilities. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to imagine anybody's really applying for top jobs in Hezbollah these days. Their life expectancy looks to be considerably shortened. But Hezbollah has accumulated over the years a fantastic number by, by public estimates between 120 and 150,000 missiles, uh, which Israel says it's already eliminated half of. Frankly, that sounds high to me. But even if it's true, it could be 60 or 70,000 still left. So that's, that's not a, uh, a sword of Damocles anybody would want to live under. Uh, and I think the more missiles that... Uh, Israel destroys, the safer they are, and, and perhaps even more important, as these two pillars of Iran's terrorist strength in the region are dismembered, uh, Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran's power overall is weakened as well.